Welcome to this demonstration video of CloudWorks for Revit. We will be covering all of the CloudWorks features that are specific to Revit along with some of the traditional features of the CloudWorks family. First we're going to start out by opening our model space view. If we come up to our project pull down menu, you will see we have the ability to import. You will see it will open up our navigator from Cyclone. Keeping in mind, you do not have to export out of Cyclone, convert your PTS file, then import it into Revit. Once you have your project in Cyclone, you quickly have the ability to open up your navigator. And here you will see all of your scan data. I'm going to go ahead and just open up this project. Also, you will notice you have the ability to choose a saved user coordinate system that you have set up from your Cyclone project as well. And just like that, we were able to open up our point cloud. Next, we're going to take a look at the clipping features. If you come up here, you will see we have the ability to clip by a fence, by a limit box, by slicing, and along with clipping at a half section. I am not going to show all of these clipping features in depth. However, I will be periodically using most of these clipping features throughout this demonstration. Let's take a look at a few that are mostly used. I'm going to go to our top view. We're going to use our box fence. You can see it's going to delete or just hide the points outside of the fence. Next, let's go to our limit box. We'll generate our base of our limit box. And then we're going to give it a height. There you will see again clipping down more points. We go to our front view, and you will see we'll go to our z-axis slice, starting at the bottom of the cloud. You can see we have the ability to move forward and backward, so if we, we click forward, you will see it will work its way up that point cloud, holding the slice, work our way back down. Go up to our clipping manager. And there you will see all of the clips we just generated, our fence, our limit box, and our slice. You have the ability also to edit the thickness of that slice, so we can change that to say 5 feet. There you will see it changes the slice of the point cloud. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. If we take a look at our limit box, and if we right click on that, we have the ability to modify it. here. So if we want to change the height and the width, that. We can go ahead and rename this limit box if we wish. So we're going to call this Chiller 1. The nice thing about this too is when we save our CloudWorks project, all of our clippings in here will be saved along with that project as well. So we can then come back to this project and when we open up our CloudWorks project, all of our named clips will be intact. Go ahead and close that. And the last thing here, we have the ability to reset all of our clips, so it's just going to turn all of the clips that we generated back on. And there you will see our full point cloud back on. Next we're going to set some levels directly from the point cloud, which will assist us when generating walls and floors and things of that nature. So again, let's see, we're going to go into our top view here. We're going to just take a slice of points so we have a better view of what we want to generate. And first we're going to go set level by point. And we're just going to grab a point right here on that rooftop. You will see it automatically fills in the elevation for the level we will be setting. We're going to give it a name. And we are going to stick this in the floor plan section. Go ahead and say OK. Next if we go and generate our top of chiller, again generating our elevation for us automatically. We'll call this top of chiller. Put it in the floor plan and say OK. If you come over to our project browser you will see it now generates those floor plans for us that we just generated. You can also go into one of our elevation views and there you will see a few of the default levels that are set in Revit along with the two that we just generated. We go into our top of chiller. 
there you will see it takes a slice out of that floor plan at that level. We're going to go ahead and just reset our clips, bring back our full point cloud, and now we're ready to move on. Now we're going to automatically fit pipes directly to the point cloud. So I'm going to go and clip down to the points we're going to work with. I'm going to fence in this area here, go into our front view. I'm just going to work with this pipe here at first. And there you will see the point cloud of the pipes that we're going to fit to. If we go up to our pipe fitter, we're going to use a box. And we're just going to fence off the points that we're going to fit the geometry to. And we're going to go into our clipping manager and I'm going to turn off that first clip. And then we're going to work on this pipe here. So again, going into our pipe fitter, I'm going to use a box. There you will see we have our center line of our pipe geometry. And if you highlight the diameter, it will give us the distance of our radius. So you will see that's a six inch uh, radius, which would be a, a 12 inch in diameter pipe. So now we're gonna go, we're just gonna turn off our point cloud to do a little bit more work here. So you will see we have a connect pipe tool that we can connect all of these pipes together. Connect these here. And then now that we have all of our pipes connected, we can go ahead and just highlight all of our pipes. And you will see here, we can go to our convert placeholder, which is going to convert all of this geometry to a true Revit pipe. And there you will see it converted our pipes along with putting the elbows at the correct locations. And now we can go in and just change this into a T and connect this pipe up to the T here. And then we can go ahead and turn our point cloud back on. Go into our clipping manager, turn that off. And there you will see now our pipe geometry. And our last step we can do here is if you come up here, we have a purge reference geometry, which will delete all of that temporary geometry that the pipe fitter generated. Go ahead and click on that. And then if you click on our pipes, you will see that indeed over here it is a true Revit pipe. Next we're going to fit a work plane directly to the point clouds. If we come up to our work plane tool, go ahead and click on that, we'll give it a name. We're going to use our pick point, say OK. And here you will see we're able to pick on the point cloud. And there you will see it was able to fit that work plane directly to the point cloud. This now enables us to draw directly on that point cloud so we could go up to our architectural tab, use our model line. We can either pick on the point cloud or just use the point clouds in the background to generate our line work. And if we go back up to our Cloudworks tab, we can turn off our point cloud and there you will see that line is indeed directly right on that work plane. This is one way that you can then generate walls and, and floors and things of that nature. Moving on to the section fitter. As you can see, I have fenced down to and have a nice slice of the point cloud just showing the perimeter of the building. What it's going to do is take any line work that we have generated and best fit it to the perimeter of the point cloud. So if we go up to our architectural tab, our model lines, and if we draw some lines, I'm going to over-exaggerate them just a little bit to show you how it'll fit the line work to the point cloud. Now you can see our line work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that line work. We're going to go back into our Cloudworks tab. We're going to go to our section fitter. Go ahead and click on that. You'll see it generates the best fit section dialog. We're going to go ahead and just hold these parameters and say OK. And there you will see it's going to show you the line that it's going to fit. Let me 
just say OK through that. And there you will see it fit that line that we generated directly to the point cloud. If we go ahead and turn off our point cloud, you can see our line work we have. Turn the point cloud back on. You can see how nicely it fit that line work directly to the point cloud. I just fit a small section here just for demonstration purposes, but you can quickly generate the line work all the way around a perimeter of a building, for example, and fit it to the point cloud. And you can then quickly generate that line work into a floor model. Next, we're going to quickly take a look at our point cloud rendering tools. You will see we have a point cloud color mapping manager, which gives us the ability to quickly change the color of the point cloud. Or we can change it to more of a true color which it's going to use the digital photographs from the scanner when the data was collected. We also have the ability to change the point cloud density. You will see this will lower the density of the point cloud. And here you will see the point visibility which allows us to quickly toggle the point cloud on and off. And then lastly you will see we have the ability to regenerate the points. If you go ahead and click on that, you will see it was able to load more points, giving us a more detailed point cloud to work with. Last thing that I'm going to do is save and close our CloudWorks project. So if we come up to our project pull down menu, you will see you have many options there to open and close our project. We're going to go ahead and save our project as. Here you will see it will give us the location where we will be saving our project. I'm going to go ahead and just use this current project that we have. This is going to save all point clouds, user coordinate systems, and clipping records that are associated with CloudWorks.